and was with me today. We got the other important group back to protect the city, but I've got our accreditation manager, Cheryl Coke, who's amazing. We also brought, we have an independent police advisory panel with the city of Sarasota. Um, so it's a civilian oversight group who advises our department, and we brought Heather Robinson here uh, to see the process. I brought Captain James Reeser, Lieutenant Lori Jarris, Lieutenant Dimitri Constantopoulos, Sergeant John Ty, Officer Scott Patrick, and Officer Dubendorf from our department. Our city is a mid-sized police agency. Uh, we have 165 officers and about 48 uh, civilians. Uh, the city of Sarasota is what you would call a circus town because John Ringling actually brought the circus to Sarasota. And uh, we also would be called a small town. Sarasota Police Department is proud to announce that we received our accreditation standard last week on June 21st, 2017. We've met before the Florida Commission of Law Enforcement for accreditation and we received a unanimous decision by the board to be reaccredited. Today you will notice that our police officers will be wearing an accreditation pin like the one that I have on my uniform that recognizes our agency for receiving that status. You will also notice on our police cars that they will have the accreditation sticker on the bumpers of their cars or in the windows of their cars, depending on the make and model of their vehicle. If you remember, back in 2014, we made the decision to withdraw from the accreditation process. Uh, we did that. It was a very humbling experience for us, but we knew it was the right decision. And we had an opportunity to revamp our police department and hire an outstanding accreditation manager, Cheryl Hoft and our, our agency embraced accreditation and really worked hard over the last three years to meet all of the standards. And uh, we are really proud of this. It's quite a distinctive honor and I'm proud of the men and women of our police department who have gone above and beyond to meet these standards. We actually have been working 
tirelessly over the last three years, gathering information for files. We had a mock uh, accreditation uh, this past fall, and then we actually had three accreditors come in March of this year, meet with our department, and uh, go and see our whole entire agency and uh, ask questions and quiz our officers and staff on various policies within the department, and we came out 100%. And uh, as Cheryl has told me, that was very unusual for the situation we started in to come out with 100% compliance, but we're very proud. And uh, you're seeing behind me just a small example of the men and women who worked hard to earn that accreditation standard. So uh, when I got this folder that had the congratulatory letter that said, we're pleased to inform you the Sarasota Police Department has met the required standards to become accredited for the Commission for Florida Law Enforcement Accreditation, and we were actually recognized for two outstanding programs, our TALA program, your Turn, or, Turn Your Life Around program, and also our HOT teams, our homeless outreach teams, were recognized and uh, commended for innovation in law enforcement, and there were other agencies that were very interested in adopting those type of plans. So at this time, I'll take any questions. First off, congratulations. Thank you. Um, second of all, you I'd be remiss not to ask you, you said it was, it was humbling in 2014. What happened and how would you prevent that from happening again? Well, we found that there were a number of standards that we weren't able to meet. For accreditation, you have to meet over 238 standards and 38 chapters uh, within the standards for law enforcement. And what the accreditation board does is they create these standards, their best practices to ensure that law enforcement is doing what it's supposed to do to follow its policies and meet its policies. And uh, when we brought Cheryl aboard, we found that there were a number of the policies that were either not being followed or the information wasn't captured and, and contained into a file, which would make it mean that we wouldn't pass accreditation because we did not meet that standard. Now we had the option. We could have gone forward and sent, you know, thrown ourselves at the mercy of the board, but we decided that it would be better because we knew that we hadn't met those standards. And you have to meet it for three consecutive years. You, you can't miss um, any standards. And we knew that we weren't going to be able to meet them, and we decided that it was best to withdraw, regroup ourselves, evaluate what the process was, and make sure that in the future that we didn't drop the ball. Right now, we have policies in place, we have practices in place, and we've got Cheryl to help lead the way. She's highly regarded and awarded accreditation manager in the state of Florida, and uh, she stays on top of us and, and keeps our feet to the fire to make sure that we are checking, doing follow-ups, holding people accountable for doing their jobs. Um, she captures all the data. Just one of the many compliments I got about Cheryl at the process, during the process, was that she kept such immaculate, impeccable files. And that was because the people around you and people within the department were giving her the information. She keeps these files. And for an example, if we had um, a, a blood exposure by one of our police officers, we have a practice and a policy and the officer, once they follow that policy, we are then documented, forwarded to Cheryl as proof of the documentation, and then we can show the accreditation team when they come in, we followed our policy, and we had evidence that we followed our policy. So everything's inspected, that we follow up, we review our policies continually, and uh, as a matter of fact, I get several across my desk every day to make sure that they meet the, the criteria for the accreditation standard, but they're also legally bound, and, and that's why we have uh, Joe Paulzak, who is part of our team, our legal team, that reviews our policies also, and Cheryl writes them and keeps them all up to date. I yes? Where do you see the Sarasota Police Department a year from now? We're gonna continue this process. This is just not because we got the accreditation, we're done. You don't rest on your laurels. As a matter of fact, it's a it's an evolving process. You must continue. So even today and over the next uh, several years, we will still maintain this process where we, we make sure we follow our policy, we document the policies, we inspect and make sure we're doing the right things, keep our policies up to date. Cheryl is in uh, close contact with the accreditation uh, boards and knows the standards. So if there's any changes that they make in the rules, then we will change our policies and make sure our officers are trained in those policies and, and updated on the policies. And, and then three years from now, we'll go through this whole process again, where we'll bring in mock accreditors to evaluate us and criti uh, give us a const constructive criticism, although I think they were very complimentary when they came back in November. And then 
Uh, we go through another process where the uh, three accreditors come to our department, evaluate us again, and then we go before the full commission. I, I'll tell you, the day that we were there in Orlando, um, there was a mixture of nerves and also excitement. I was very proud of our organization because we already got the preliminary report back and it was it was glowing, it was um, exemplary. I, I couldn't have asked for a better report on our agency. Uh, but then you have to go before a board and uh, it's a three panel board and it was eight o'clock in the morning and we had just gone to a budget hearing the night before. I left immediately from the budget hearing to, to be at the hotel and up and ready to go before the board at 8 a.m. And you then present yourself, your agency, and uh, they ask you some questions and let you talk about some of your programs. And then from there, you go to a larger room where you have the full board. Um, there's a panel of people that are experts in accreditation. They're my peers, um, chiefs and sheriffs and, and dignitaries from all over the state. And uh, either you're then presented before the board, you're given an opportunity to again sell your agency, talk about your city, and, uh, and then they make a, a decision as to whether you get your accreditation standard. And uh, some people might say, oh, well, it's kind of just a, a cookie cutter process. Now, we experienced in the many hours that we were in that room, there were agencies, and I won't name them, but there were agencies there that were really, um, uh, they were critical of them. They had missed some standards. Um, some had uh, potentially were going to have provisions placed upon them. Uh, so it was, it was quite uh, eye-opening to see that it was just not this, we're just going to give you this accreditation. This is something you have to earn. It's something that's, um, I think, very, um, I guess, prestigious is the best word I can say. And it's not an easy thing to attain. And I'm very proud of the work that the men and women of our agency have done to be able to get us to this level of accreditation, especially with 100% compliance and, and with the compliments and the, and the glowing remarks that they made about our agency. Is this the first time you've had a full-time compliance officer? We have had a, a person that was, a, I would say she was a part-time person before that. Um, uh, this is a full-time job. And uh, if you're gonna take accreditation seriously, you need to have somebody like Cheryl, and we're lucky because there were, there were actually people there asking about her, and we were just saying, stay away, she's ours. We're not letting her go uh, because she's amazing. She knows accreditation. Again, as I said, she's an awarded accreditation manager, and uh, she, she is, very active with the organization and very well respected and regarded. So it was good to have someone like that staying on top of us, keeping us guided in the right direction to get this. And uh, so we're, we're very lucky to have her. Okay. Um, so uh, we know it's not mandatory to have accreditation, correct? It is not. And not all Florida organizations uh, have accreditation. Okay. And then how does this impact the people, the citizens of Sarasota? Like, how does this impact them? That's a great question. What this does, this should should reaffirm to the citizens of the city of Sarasota, who we already know really have a high regard for their police departments. They love their officers here. This should affirm to them that they have a professional, progressive, modern police department that is working and meeting standards that are set by the state of Florida accreditation uh, board and that we are doing a good job and this is going to help reduce liability because the officers have policies that they follow and it's mandatory that they follow them. It keeps track of it. It has us holding uh, people accountable for doing their jobs and we're able to verify it. We're not just saying, oh yeah, we're doing a good job. We're able to verify and show that we're following policies, that we have standards, that are the best practices in the state of Florida and that we're meeting those practices every day. So it will just, again, affirm to our citizens that they have a professional, honorable law enforcement agency. All set. Good. One more question for you. Yes. Uh, you mentioned, you touched on the, the hot teams being recognized. Yes. Elaborate? Yes. When we had the people come to our department, um, we were able to showcase. We actually had a, a static uh, display of all of our equipment of our department, and they also got to meet with different, you know, like the canine unit, the SWAT team, and they met with our homeless outreach team. They also heard about our Tyler program, the Turn Your Life Around program, which is a uh, prostitution and human, traffic, human trafficking deferment program. So when they met the, um, the, the hot team, they were so impressed with our homeless outreach the things that we were doing, um, it was recognized as 
uh, a best practice. And as a matter of fact, the ICP has just asked us to present an hour and a half in the Philadelphia ICP conference in the fall as a best practice nationwide, if, if not internationally, um, as to how to address homeless issues, doing it one person at a time, uh, using police officers that don't use enforcement, but work together with caseworkers to do outreach with homeless within the community, put them to resources, and then eventually those resources will help people get into housing. So they were so impressed with that uh, program, and we were able to reduce homelessness by 200 from last year. Um, they highlighted that as a, um, a, a, good, a good practice and that they were interested in and sharing with uh, other organizations. Thank you. One last question. Sorry. That's okay. um, how much does this actually cost to have this whole process to do? How much does it actually cost? Well, the, 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 the cost, you can't really narrow down an exact cost other than we have an accreditation manager who is worth her weight in gold, who we pay uh, a salary. Um, and then we also have the, just the process itself, but we would be doing all of these things anyway. It would be just part of our normal operation to you know, write our policies, make sure our officers were trained in the policies and follow up. Now there is a cost for accreditation. How much does it cost for the $1,600 every three years is the cost uh, for the accreditation. And then we, we buy the pins for the police officers and the stickers. And uh, we were awarded this great uh, uh, framed certificate that we're going to be hanging probably on the first floor so that everybody comes in and gets to see it. So that's the, the cost beside the salary of our accreditation manager, the $1,600. No, actually, um, uh, we're in our area, our region, I think all except for one agency is uh, has Florida accreditation.